fill in this area right over here of that mountain. So we start with the background sky color and we add a little bit of black ultramarine. We dab that down a few times like this until it's slightly marbled. Yeah, now we've got a bit of a marbled effect here. So let's give that a try in the center. Yeah, that looks like it might be close. So we just make short strokes and cover up the lines of our sketch. If we do this right, it's one pass. Mixing. And just scratch away. Now we'll work on the mountain that's even closer. And since it's closer, we can add a little bit more raw umber to it. These are not necessarily finished colors. We can go in afterwards and dial the colors in a little bit and it'll be really exciting if you're easily excited. If not, well, we have to feel sorry for you. You'll notice I have significant lumps of the lightest blue and a slightly darker blue from the sky on my palette. We need to bring those into the lower portions of the painting to maintain continuity of color. Now we'll start by blocking in the colors into this portion of the water here. We'll start with blue that's a little bit darker because whenever light hits the water, the water tends to absorb quite a bit of it. So as we work more over to the right, we're getting reflections of the dark mountain that we painted in just a little earlier. It's interesting to notice that there's quite a bit of marbling that pulls on if you don't mix your paint very smoothly. That's one of the strengths of using palette knives. We don't put on an awful lot of paint at one time, but if we mix the colors right, we may not have to ever touch any of these portions again. You may notice me looking off to my left at times here. That's where my reference material is. I keep it on a Samsung Galaxy tablet. And the reason I use that for reference material rather than a printed page because it gives me far superior color reproduction to anything that I can hope to print. We always allow a little bit of marbling to take place with palette knives. It just makes the work generally more interesting. One of the most common problems I see with my students is that they tend to over mix their colors before they apply them. They tend to mix them until they're completely homogenous. Of course, then you lose all the benefits of painting with a palette knife. We'll continue by blocking in the yellow bottle. What we've got here on our palette is cadmium yellow, yellow mixed with white, yellow okra mixed with blue quin gold, warm up to warm it up after it's blue so that you get kind of a shadow to yellow cap. From past experience, I know that after I'm done, I'll have to go through and adjust all of these colors. That's okay, that's expected, I expect that, so that's fine. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to adjust them darker later on. Oh well, I'm an artist, and that's part of my job, so that's what I always have to do. We will start with yellow tint as influenced by the blue in the background. Interesting things happen with distortions when you're looking at anything through a wine glass. Of course, the distortion is the most intense at the edges of the glass. So whenever you're painting wine, that's one of the things that you have to factor into all of your that wine doesn't look very transparent. The reason for that is because whenever you look through wine or any liquid, you see things through it and you see things reflected by it as well. So as soon as we add some of those details, so that the wine will begin to look transparent. It's got a very slight curve on the side. I've only ever seen one of these, and I found it at Michael's, which is an art store in Canada. So I'm going to use that edge, just work away from the edges of the glass. One of the things that defines glass is that it has hard edge. The enemy of all artists, except for me. While my alter ego answered the door, I finished blocking in the painting. We'll take a little peek at our reference material here. Uh, we're going to work on detailing that yellow bottle cap.
Today we will work on the glass. One of the comments that I often get is how realistic my glass look. And the reason for that is I don't try to paint the glass. I simply paint the effect that glass has on light. That means we have to paint the reflections and the refraction. And what's surprising is the amount of distortion that you get when you look through a wine glass, which acts very much like a magnifying lens. So then you'll get where the curvature of the lens is like this. This edge will pull inward towards the middle of the lens. The same thing happens here. So we're going to paint a distorted image of this water right into this area right here. So we put the distortion from the refraction in, but now on this outside edge, that is faced upwards towards the sky. So we're going to pick up some of the reflections, uh, not the refraction, but the reflection from the sky. We'll do a little bit more of that reflective work right along the edge of this glass. Now you can see that I've turned my canvas sideways because I'm right hand. So I'll glaze a little bit more color into that edge there. Something with a mix of white and cerulean blue. So you can see that this glazing of these reflections really only has much of an effect on the dark because the light areas very much get washed out. Okay, we're going to work at adding some texture into this area here. Uh, the coarseness of the sand, and we're looking at wine glasses that are just normal sized wine glasses. We're close. I'm using te a technique that harks back to my days as a drywall contractor when I worked with a trowel. So I think of it as skip troweling because I just put a little bit of uh, paint on the flat part as I move along, I slowly, slowly roll the palette knife down so it leaves a little bit of paint behind, hence the term skip crawling. I decided in my infinite wisdom that I should paint a white spiral on this red bottle cap. So I drew a reference line up the middle and I drew uh, reference lines at every inch that gave me distance to space this. Now, that's not mathematically correct to draw a line straight across. So, I took a piece of masking tape and masked it out on this bottle. We can see that as it wraps around, it swings downward in a little bit of a curve and swings upward like this. So we'll just make that adjustment visually and only use these lines as a reference point. As a matter of interest, this winery asked whether to use some of my art on their bottle labels. This was what they called the Jazz Series and a number of images like that. Big excitement for me in those days. Whatever that means. I've mixed a narrow range of white through medium gray to accomplish this task.
Okay, right now we are going to glaze a little bit more of the reflection from the sky down through this area here. And what we've got is a mixture of cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and quite a bit of white. So I start at the top here. As you can see, I work with my easel in the vertical. So uh, I just start at the top and I let gravity help me along, moving the paint downward as I lay it into the various areas. Very simple technique, you've all done it many times. Now we'll add a little more realism by painting in a reflection of this bottle into this bottle right there. It's a fairly simple procedure. We'll use a red paint that's got a bit of white and gray mixed in to, to give us coverage over the dark blue and the black. As you can see, the sketch that I've made is done with chalk. And after the paint is dry, we just take uh, any kind of a dry rag and wipe it off. Now we'll work on uh, putting some of the little distortions underneath here that are caused by the surface tension as it pulls up onto the glass. You'll see that right here I've put in a light flare that's formed by sunshine coming through and being refracted out towards the lens. At this point I'm going to intensify some of the colors that are formed on the bottom of the lake here by light coming through from probably catching through this upturned part of the water where the surface tension changes the angle and the curvature of the surface of the water. So the light gets refracted down through there and thrown onto the surface of the sand right down there. So I'm going to now we're going to work on detailing the reflection of that bottle cap right there. Obviously it's far from complete because it doesn't uh, reflect the colors very accurately. Okay, here we've put some tears into the wine right down along here, up in here. That's just the wine as it runs down.